morning, everybody, and welcome to our webinar today on our business support webinar on about vision and goals with Nordens. Um, it's the first in our series of the Interactive Accelerator program, and I'll let Joe uh, Sword, our presenter, talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get to do his introduction. So first off, uh, yeah, I'm Greg Guilford. I'm the CEO of HR Solutions, and we have Joe Sword, Head of Strategic Business Planning at Nordens, who's going to do most of the talking today. We also have uh, Atim Ardin, who's our digital marketing exec, who'll be able to help you with any technical support uh, that you, you have throughout the session, if you just put any of your questions that you need help with into the chat panel. Uh, closing the title, we do want to make these uh, webinars as interactive as possible, but when you join, you'll notice that you are all on mute. Um, but we do want you to ask uh, as many questions as possible. And to do that, we use the GoToWebinar Q&A uh, panel, which sh should look something like uh, what you can see on the screen now. Simply put your question into the panel there, and we will uh, pull all the questions to ask Joe uh, either as we go or at the end of the session. Um, and we will make it interactive as well through some polls that will come up uh, throughout the session, asking you um, a series of questions. And they'll just pop up on your screen and just uh, quite simply choose the answer that is most relevant to you. Again, it is interactive, so that, um, whenever you see this uh, slide, it's because we're, we're asking you to do something, so to take some notes or to write something down for your own personal benefit. Um, so, yeah, we are trying to make it as interactive as possible, and if you do want to put anything in, in the chat panel as we go, uh, please do, and ask as many questions as, as you can as well. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Joe, and he's going to talk about vision and, vision and goals. Thanks, Greg. So, as you said, um, my name is Joe Sword. I'm the Strategic, Strategic Consultancy Director at Nordens, um, and our department is specifically designed with the core purpose of working with business owners on a really personal and intense basis to help them identify their true goals and set an action plan roadmap towards them. Um, I've worked myself with hundreds of businesses over the years, and we believe that we as a firm have the ability to support and help many business owners move to the next level through our advisory services. And we want to make this available to as many people as possible. And during lockdown, we were assessing our consultancy and advisory offering, and we realized it wasn't touching as many business owners as we wanted. So we've developed a way to offer a strategic consultancy at a much more affordable cost. It's literally the interactive accelerator program that we've launched is literally the price of a gym membership and it's proven to be a huge success this far. Um, I suppose the, the, the reason that we have myself have got heavily into the advisory area is that we truly believe that every business owner is capable of achieving their dreams. And as part of our own vision, we want to help everyone we work with identify and achieve those dreams and goals. And, we strongly believe that achieving success shouldn't be that sort of lonely path that business owners walk by themselves and successful business owners and people in general appreciate this and they surround themselves with that support network of specialists to help them along the way. And you just need to look at top athletes, top business people or anyone at the top of their field and they all have coaches to keep them focused and guide them in the right direction. So when they execute their talents, it hits the spot as often as possible. And if you read or listen to them when they when they talk about their successes, they often refer back to their coach as a vital component of that success. So to give you a little bit more about our program and how it works. So the Interactive Accelerator program, it's a biweekly online program where each session will be based around a segment of what we call our wheel of success. And there are seven segments in our wheel and our webinar series will focus on each of these in turn. Um, and we strongly believe that success in these seven areas will lead to overall business success. And on the flip side, when you look at businesses that are struggling or failing, you can genuinely, genuinely attribute it to one or more of these areas. So the seven areas that we're going to look at on this mini series are your vision and goals, your sales and marketing, your mindset, your cash flow, your systems and processes, your profitability and your team and culture. And our program, it will give you key benefits such as firstly bespoke advice from our team of consultants and special guests, industry experts that we bring on from time to time. You'll have access to a group of like minded business owners from a variety of different sectors to give you different thoughts and perspectives. 
which will not only enhance your support network, but you will often see things in a slightly different light when you're listening to other people who aren't potentially as emotionally attached to your business as you are. You'll also have that accountability, which is really, really crucial. So you'll have a team of people who will hold you accountable, which is proven to get results quicker. And in each session, there's a strong focus on goals and taking action. So that ensures you don't just build momentum, but you maintain it. Now, these ingredients we've found are key elements for success. And we have a growing number of case studies from businesses and their owners who are thriving because of the program. And it's proven that working with others in this way can actually increase your success rate by up to 200%. So that gives you a bit of insight into our program. And now on to today. So today we're going to look at the first segment of our wheel, which is your vision and goals, which to me are the foundations of a successful business. And while we're not going to replicate the interactiveness of our full program completely today, we're going to try, as Greg mentioned, to create that element of interactiveness by using the polling system on the webinar. So when you get a chance to share your thoughts, pop pop questions, pop thoughts in the Q&A box, and we'll try and make it as interactive as we possibly can. So the end of, at the end of today's session, the aim is for every one of you who is listening to take away at least one key area to work on and implement. Um, and like Greg mentioned, if you've got any questions, pop them in the chat box. But what we'll do now is we'll get started on today's focus, which is around your vision and goals. But before we talk specifically about your vision, or we talk specifically about your why, your goals, sorry, let's talk about your why or your purpose. Now, most people know exactly what they do in their business. Many also know and can articulate how they do what they do. But when I ask business owners, why do you do what you do? Very few are actually able to really quickly and succinctly articulate this. So when I ask, what is your why? Why do you do what you do? Often the response will be, well, to make money. But in my mind, making money is not your why, it's a result of exercising your why well. The why is really about why you get out of bed in the morning, and more importantly than that, why should anyone else care? You know, it's, it's your business's reason for existing, and that may be to eliminate a headache or help make a wider contribution to others. So in my mind, your why can't be measured in monetary value. The money that comes off the back of it is a byproduct of exercising your why effectively through what you do. So have a little think about some of your favorite businesses right now. And the ones that are coming to mind are probably more likely than not those that communicate why they do what they do exceptionally well. And articulating your why creates that army of loyal followers or family of loyal followers who are not buying what you do or how you do it as much but they're actually aligning with your purpose the why of what you do now i allude to the fact that not many businesses get this totally right and this is often due to a mismatch in the way they communicate where many of them start what's called outside in explaining what they do and how they do it but they gloss over or leave out why they do what they do whereas the most successful businesses start the other way. They start inside out. So in my view, if you're looking to build not just a good business, but a great business, you need to start with your why and put it right out there at the forefront of what you're all about and be comfortable and confident in communicating this to anyone. Now, Simon Sinek, the author and motivational speaker, is probably the biggest promoter out there of just how important your why is and gives a really good example on one of his TED Talks using Apple. So. He says that Apple could communicate in a way that looks like this. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed and really user friendly. Do you want to buy one? But Apple doesn't just sell products. They affirm their customers' beliefs and values. So instead of placing their emphasis on their products, they emphasize their beliefs. So in turn, Apple communicate a little bit more like this. In everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. And we believe in thinking differently. The way we do this is by making our products beautifully designed and user friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Do you want to buy one? So a lot of companies define themselves by what they do, whereas Apple define themselves by why they exist. And this to me is one of the key reasons that Apple has been able to grow so quickly and create that loyal following where a lot of their competitors at the time, especially when they were starting out, had access to similar technology and probably expertise. And they created things like MP3 players that very few people bought. So to give you another example of us at Nordens, 
we could position our offering based on what we do. We're a firm of business advisors and accountants, and we, act to, we, we interact with our clients regularly. We make things clear for them, set them targets, and hold them accountable. But we prefer to communicate more like this. So at Nordens, we exist to help people identify and achieve their goals. We do this by regularly interacting with our clients, making things clear for them, we set them targets and hold them accountable. We just happen to be a firm of business advisors and accountants. And there's a well-known saying that your why should be capable of making you cry. If it doesn't, it's not your why. Now, I'm not really expecting everyone to start breaking down in tears here, but the why does come fundamentally from that emotional and feeling part of you. So finding your why does involve digging deep. And we did this with one particular client a little while back. And initially they said, the reason I'm, the reason I'm in business is to earn money and ideally to put my children through a top, a top private school. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that as a goal, which we'll come on to shortly, but I argued that that wasn't his why. So we drilled deeper, we spent a bit more time discussing various elements of him and his business and his beliefs. And the reason deep down he was working in that particular industry and he wasn't, for example, an accountant. And we uncovered his true why was to contribute to making the planet more environmentally friendly for future generations. And because of that deep rooted belief, the industry he was in, he was able to actually make a significant impact here. So from that conversation, from drilling deeper, it went from a case of, well, look, I'm only in business to make money and ideally put my kids through private school to I want to be a part of the changing of the planet and making it more environmentally friendly. So you can see straight away, it's so much more powerful, so much more emotion there. And I think if you are really struggling to, to kind of identify your why, have a think back to your past successes and your favorite stories and drill into them and to ask, why did they make me feel happy? What was it about that experience that I loved? Chances are your why will be hidden within them. So, what, we'd like, what I'd like to do now is to ask a couple of questions around your why. Um, so firstly, can you articulate your why and your purpose in one sentence? And there's a few options there, I believe, on the poll that we're about to do. Um, yeah, so you, you can, you feel really comfortable doing it. Um, you can articulate it, but you think you could maybe make it a little bit more succinct, or you're not quite totally clear on your why at the moment. And, this happens quite a lot with a lot of business owners where we work with. They haven't really thought about their why for many years, if at all. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think we'll give maybe 30 seconds or so for everyone just to jot down. Just just be honest, you know, if, if you haven't really came across your why or you really you really promote your why and it's everything about, just answer accordingly. Just be honest. And I believe um, the poll will be the, the poll results will be anonymous anyway. So what we'll put up will be a percentage that we'll share and just just have a look and see people that's listening today where where you're positioned on your why so we'll see just um just wait a few more seconds for people to answer and then we can move we can move on see what people have said yeah so the polls are coming through joe there's a, a bit of a mixture mixture of results i'll share it in a second we've got about 50 percent of people uh responded so if you do want to participate please just choose your option uh but i'm going to close it in a couple of seconds Okay, I'm going to close the poll and then I'm going to share the results. Great. Okay, fantastic. So there's a bit of a mixture there, like you said. So, and I think, I think it's probably that's probably a reasonably fair representation of of our dealings with business owners over the years. That some business owners are really, really clear about their passion and they make it a, they make it kind of the standing point of everything they discuss and, and promote within their business. Some know it and they maybe feel like you know what. I could probably make it a bit more succinct thinking about it a bit more deeply and some just haven't really thought about it but it is there that's the that's the key thing it is deep down ingrained and it just needs to be fished out so to speak because there is a clear purpose there for pretty much every business owner there's a reason that you started in that business doing that thing there must be an underlying passion there but i think it's really really important and i think we'll come on to we'll get across just how important it is as we move forward with the vision and the goals because really your why and your purpose frames everything um and the, so following on from that question i'd like to ask another question on the why so how often do you refer to your why in conversations with customers your team and in your marketing because 
like with the example with Apple, they're very, very focused on their purpose and their beliefs, and it, it resonates with other people. And that's really what it's all about. You know, people buy from people very often, and it's all about resonating. And I think by making your beliefs crystal clear, you'll find other people who share similar beliefs. So keen to see how often you refer to your why when you speak to your customers, when you speak to your team, and in your marketing material. And if you can just select one again, just, just, just be as honest as you can be. You know, there's no right or wrong answer today just be just be truthful and let's let's see because it would be interesting because there's one thing knowing your why there's another thing really proactively communicating your why they're two slightly different things so again it would be good to see what where everyone stands at the moment on this okay so we've got about 60 percent uh have taken part in the poll so just going to give it a few more seconds before we share the results again Okay, I'm gonna close it and then share. Okay, so it's good to see it's good to see over twenty percent of you communicating that regularly. I do honestly believe that's a really important part, and I think quite a few of you seem like you're on the track you're on track to get into that regular communication. But it'd be interesting just just to understand a bit more about why you do it sporadically and and whether whether that works for you, whether doing it a bit more regularly, a bit more structured, will actually work for you because. There's obviously a benefit from doing it, um, or you probably wouldn't carry on doing it. So I think maybe looking at that would be good. Um, and some people haven't really thought about their why, so that's that's useful to know as well, because it is it is in you. Like I said, it is deep down, but it's not often the first thing people think about. And we've had this with clients where we spent quite a lot of time sort of getting it out of them, but afterwards they were like, oh yeah, that really actually what we've discussed makes so much sense. It starts piecing things together. Um, so. When you feel like you're happy with your why, I, I think what I'd recommend to do is actually write it down or have a visual reminder of it in a prominent place so you can see it each day. Because I think what it does for me is it helps it helps me channel my decisions and helps me channel my focus. But not only that, it really helps keep me motivated on those down days that everyone has. You know, when you when you're just feeling like everything's just not going right you look at that and you say well this is why i'm doing it this is this is what this is what i'm doing this for you know it's it's bigger than me and my mood at this time it's this is my this is my real true purpose and this is what i'm looking to achieve so i think having the visual representation the visual reminder is quite powerful as well so so there's some there's some interesting thoughts there it's good to see that there's a bit of a mixture there so hopefully it will it will help as we go on that we can start unpicking why these areas are so important and also why we've started with this as the first session of our mini series because i think these really are the sort of foundations and the building blocks to move forward on to the next parts so that's really good so once you've got your why clear the next which the why is often the hardest part um as it's often really deep rooted and does need a bit of digging at times to fish it out so the next two sections should get progressively easier to identify. So while your why is your foundation, so to speak, your vision should be heavily aligned and based on your why. And it's ultimately how you see the future ideal world through your eyes. And often we hear two words around this area. We hear vision statements and mission statements. And some businesses have one, some businesses have the other, some have both, some don't have any. And there's really no standard unified definition between the two. So rather than exploring vision, which is a bit more future focused and mission, which is more centered around the doing and what we're doing now separately, um, I feel it's better if we incorporate this section into overall vision or sort of just cause. Um, so there's five key elements that make up a really successful vision. Um, and the five elements are, firstly, they must be for something. Um, a, so a positive and specific vision for the future. What do you stand for as opposed to stand against? It needs to be inclusive. So it needs to be open to everyone who would like to contribute. So when people hear your vision, they think, oh yeah, I'd like to be a part of that. They need to be service orientated. So the primary benefit must be for others. Of course you can benefit, but only once you've benefited others. They need to be resilient. So they have to be able to endure political or sort of technological or cultural change. So defining your vision on one product alone is not likely to work. And it needs to be idealistic. This is probably the most important of the five, really. It needs to be big, bold, and to an extent, 
strangely enough, unachievable. So it's sort of something that you can visualize and you're striving to achieve, but you're likely to spend your whole career trying. So a just cause that's bigger than yourself, so to speak. So at Norden's, coming back to our vision, our vision is to help every single person we work with identify and achieve their goals. Now, the 100% may be unlikely to ever reach that 100% mark for various reasons, but that's what we're going to commit our careers to doing our best to make that happen. So the vision is big and bold and ultimately is as far reaching as you can and you can as you can visualize. And at Norden's, we put it into a sentence. So at Norden's, our vision is for a world where every single person we work with achieves their goals. So what I'd like you to do now is to have a little think about your own vision and maybe jot this down by completing a similar sentence. So at your company, our vision is for a world where X, because sometimes that sentence is a really easy, nice and easy way to frame it. So it'd be interesting to see what people are, what people are putting down there. Um, and I've now got a question off the back of this. So we've talked about the why, we've talked about the vision. So my question off the back of, of this is around sharing your vision. It's, it's great to be clear on it, but ideally you want others to know about it and buy into it too. And the more you say something, the more real it starts to become. So following on similar sort of question to your why, how do you communicate your vision? Um, so do you discuss it on a regular basis? Do you refer to your vision now and again, a bit ad hoc? Do you rarely mention it? Or do you feel like at this moment in time, you haven't really defined your vision? Um, I, I went on a course a little while ago and one of the one of the most powerful things that I, I got from the course was the guy running the course picked the picked his phone up and he said, right, I want everyone else to do the same. And I want I want you to text someone that, you know, someone that you care about. I want you to, I want you to text them your vision. And by doing that straight away, it brings in that level of accountability. And I just thought that was really powerful. So if you feel brave enough to do that and just just send someone that, you know, a text and say, look, this is what I'm trying to achieve. This is what this is what I, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I'm doing. And I think all of a sudden it it, it starts making it more real. Um, so that's something that I learned that I thought was quite useful. So be interesting to see where you all sit on this poll. Um, OK, we're just waiting for we've got about 40 percent. So just waiting for a few more people to choose their options and then I'll close the poll. Yeah. OK, I'm going to close it now. OK. OK, so that's, that's quite interesting. So I think people seem to feel more comfortable with their vision than they do with their why, perhaps. So that's that's interesting. Though, and that's probably would be expected. The why is a bit deeper rooted than the vision. Um, again, those those people who are referring to the vision now and again, I think if you can step that up a bit and maybe make that a bit more regular, I think that would be more more powerful and you get more success from it and people that rarely mention it or haven't defined it maybe the people who rarely mention it maybe need maybe need to be, do a bit more work and this is where if you, especially if you're working with your team and things like that you know the, the, the key people within your business you know you can you can get them to buy into it as well and, and do it as a bit of a brainstorm sometimes and it's it's quite a powerful way of getting the team to buy into the vision because they feel like they've helped create it. it it can be a real real success and for those of you that haven't defined your vision, you know, maybe maybe spend a little bit of time looking at that. Because I think that as we'll move on to goals, your vision in my mind is sort of like your ultimate goal. So I think it's sort of like when you can look at your ultimate end point, you've got something to work towards. Without that, it becomes very difficult. We use the analogy from time to time that, well, you've got you you're in a you're in a car without anywhere to go, you know, and the vision helps put that destination there. Um so that was quite interesting. Um, again, it's not something I wouldn't really expect based on the answer to the why. So let's now move it forward and look at your goals. So we've got our why, which is our purpose, why we're doing something. We've got our vision, which is where we want to go. And we now really need something tangible to cement it all together. And this is where your goals come in. So often a lot of people I've found where they start struggling in this area is they look at their vision and like the illustration on the screen is quite a good one. They look at that end flag and they say, right, until I get to that end flag, I haven't achieved. And that's pretty demoralizing because that end flag, if you set a big, bold vision, it's a long way away. You know, you're striving to achieve something that's really big, it's massive. And it becomes quite deflating. Well, I've been working for the past year and I don't feel like I'm much closer to that end flag. Well, 
this is why it's important to set goals because if you don't set sort of targets or milestones towards that vision you'll get deflated quite quickly you won't see success and it will also potentially take you off course and the key thing to remember about goals is you may have heard the term before they need to be smart and most people setting goals fall down because they don't meet one or more of these metrics and end up with vague or unrealistic goals which will lead to demotivation and failure so if you look at the most common goal setting date of the year the new year's resolution a study was carried out that showed 80 percent of all new year's resolutions fail by mid-feb so that's an 80 percent failure rate in just six weeks and if you hear a lot of these new year's resolutions there are many reasons for it but pretty much all of them can be attributed to one of these criteria so let's have a little look at these so we've got specific so the s in smart so your goals need to be specific it's so important that there's enough detail and they're meaningful but also stating what you're going to do so to use the oh, i know it's not business related or um i want to lose weight for example one of the most common goals out there you're not actually saying what you're going to do to lose the weight or i want to get more customers again you're not actually saying what you're going to do so make sure you're using action words when you're setting your goals the m stands for measurable so at the goal date can we actually measure it properly to conclude whether the goal has been achieved so using an amount or an other metric to actually measure it and avoid vague words like we said like more customers or increased sales because it's not specific or measurable enough to know whether you've actually achieved it the a stands for attainable so it's re it's realistic and can actually be achieved um, again it needs to be realistic and that's where the difference is between goals and vision with a with a vision you want it to be big bold massive but with a goal because it's a stepping stone you don't really want it to be you want to push yourself don't get me wrong but you don't want to make it so big too soon where you would become demotivated and it's just not realistic in that time frame then the r stands for relevant so like we've looked at it aligns with your why and it aligns with your vision because if it doesn't why are you doing it um, because often we'll see, and that, that's quite a good way to vet the things that you're doing and the things that you're working on, because really looking at it, well, I, I could do A or B, well, A, A, will do, A will help me this way, but B actually aligns with what I'm trying to achieve. So it will help you weed out some things that you may be doing that you don't actually really need to. And finally, Finally, you have to put deadlines on your goals because what you see is, oh yeah, well, I want to get new customers. You don't put a time frame on it and all of a sudden it just tricks along and you don't move quick enough by not putting that deadline on it. So set yourself those deadlines and hold yourself accountable ideally to meeting those deadlines. Um, and on goals, there's just a couple of final tips that I'd like to share from my own learning. So set bite-sized goals, but set them often, but action them actually take action so i i really really advocate small and regular action as opposed to smashing it in one mammoth goal driven day because if you do it small and often you start building that habit and habits are one of the most important things you know build that habit build that momentum and it starts building confidence confidence and success starts to become a habit but by doing it one one like blocking out one massive day to meet all your goals it's just unrealistic and it becomes a bit of a you, Comes a bit daunting as well so i think if you just chip away at them on a regular basis you'll have much more success quickly and the other part is we've touched on it slightly is having someone to hold you accountable it's proven to having that extra layer of accountability can really fast forward your level of success so that's why telling people and holding yourself but getting other people to ideally hold yourself accountable it's really important and it's even more crucial for those business owners who are running a business on their own because often it's it's quite lonely at the top. There's not that many people to talk talk about it to, and there's not that many people who would actually understand or be able to resonate with your situation. So look at building that support network to help you keep accountable of your goals. Um, so taking all of this into account, I'd like to I'd like you to just maybe have a little jot down of your tangible goals for the next 12 months if you haven't done this already. What I'd say is keep them to a to sort of a maximum of three because that's one of the other drawbacks with goals. You can often set too many and then you become too widespread and you don't 
your focus is too widespread so you're then spread too thin and you end up starting lots of them but not really achieving many of them so keep it to a maximum of three that generally seems to work and these goals should be personal and business related because after all the business is still a vehicle for you to achieve your personal goals and ideally there should be one sort of financial metric in there where possible um, so while you're doing that there's a couple of last couple of questions i'd like to finish off with on the goal so firstly i'd really like to get an understanding of how often you set goals um do you set them daily do you set them weekly do you set them monthly six monthly do you set them yearly or you don't um and it, afterwards we want i'd like to get an understanding of how smart you believe the goals you set are so we'll do it we'll do the first the first poll first just to get an idea of how often you actually set goals. Um, and although the goals can be set in your head, it is better if you can write them down and ideally tell someone else about them so then you really do have that accountability for them. Um, so yeah, again, when uh, we'll see we'll see how you're getting on with the poll, a couple more, couple more seconds, I believe, and then we can... Uh, yeah, so the can, first one, we're about 60% completed. So uh, we'll just give it a few more seconds before we close that one. Great. Okay, I'm going to close the first one and share the results. Oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, so the eight the eight percent of people that have said I don't, well, you, a lot of people probably been in that position before, but I do think it's something to definitely consider because, again, if you're looking to achieve something by not setting goals, not setting targets, it's very difficult to determine whether you've got there. So I think. Don't be too deterred by it, but I would say that look, start small. This is this is what I what, what kind of a key message I'd like to get across. Today. Just start small, but practice often. You know, um, everything starts from somewhere, so just give it a go. With people who are setting yearly goals, there's nothing wrong with yearly goals at all. I'd recommend to set yearly goals, but not only setting them yearly. I think you need to break them down into very at least monthly or quarterly elements, so you can see if you're chipping away at them because. Clients we've worked with in the past who set goals on a yearly basis, it's often sometimes you, you'd leave it, say, six to nine months before you even look at it again and properly make a start. So I think you need to break that yearly goal down into even smaller chunks to say, right, OK, we want to achieve this in the next 12 months. What do we need to achieve in the quarter to make that first step towards it? Monthly goals again. And I think I think a lot a lot of goal setting would be around the daily, weekly, monthly, but you should still have the yearly and longer term element into it. So I think if daily goals work for you, weekly goals work for you, monthly goals work for you, great. But the next question is probably more important, which will be how smart do you think the goals you're setting actually are? Because that's ultimately you could set daily goals, daily goals, daily goals, but if they're not very smart and they're not meeting the smart criteria. You, you, you're going to have a, you're going to have difficulty achieving what you want. So again, it'd be really cool to see what people say to this question off the back of the previous answer. Um, so again, give give a minute or so to let people jot down their thoughts here, and then Greg will share again, and we can have a little look. Um, yeah, so people are still they, still putting their answers in at the moment. So we'll just give it a few more seconds. Great. Because I know, in, I know in my own personal experience, you know, sometimes I sometimes I even set goals too vague, and then I check myself. I look back and I say, right, well, is this smart? I go through the I go through the five metrics, and I'm like, okay, I need to firm that up a little bit. I mean, maybe need to make that a bit more specific. And it it really helps with giving you that direction and giving you that clarity. So it's very very clear. And what that does is when you've got that clear direction and focus, any distractions that raise their head, you can quickly bat them away. That's one of the often the biggest challenges that business owners face in the sense that there's so many things they could be doing on a daily basis okay that's interesting so congrats to the 14 percent of people that have said very smart fantastic and it's about embedding that within your business to make sure other people do the same thing but also making sure you do things to make sure that that will not start falling away so keeping that up smart is good but perhaps there is a way that you can make them into very smart maybe a little bit of a tweak can be done not very smart okay again well hopefully what we've discussed and the benefits of making them smart will maybe help you change your goal setting process slightly so okay 
So no one's saying that their goals are completely not smart, which is good, um, but maybe there's a bit of scope for improvement there. So that's that's interesting to know. And I just think, yeah, like, like I was sort of alluding to, that goals are so important because it gives you that clear focus and di direction, and it allows you to say no to more distractions that raise their head, you know? And by having that clear why and having that clear purpose and vision alongside it, it makes your goal goal setting process easier because then you can start looking back at every goal you set and saying, well look, is this aligned with my with my true purpose? Is this aligned with my vision for my business? You know, are is this goal a stepping stone towards that? And if it isn't, maybe you need to have a rethink. Or if it's only partly, maybe you just need to make it a bit more specific. But I think saying no is a really powerful thing as well. And we might touch on that in a in one of the future um sessions that we do around mindset because that is one of the things that separates a lot of successful people from People aren't as successful as they ideally could be. So we drilled deeper into your why today. We've had a little look at your vision and your goals, and hopefully you'll have a clearer idea of your why and vision, or at least taken away some things to think about. And you've now got at least one smart goal for the next 12 months, I hope. But 12 months, like we were saying, is a long time into the future. So no, so it's a long time into the future, so no rush to start straight away and we can revisit this in, in a couple of months and start doing stuff behind it, yeah? Well, that is, the, that is the trap a lot of business owners fall into. It's a 12 monthly goal, give it a couple of months, then I'll look at it. Um, and because of that, they ultimately are behind or they ultimately don't end up achieving what they want. So what I'd like to finish with today, because this is a mini series, um, we'd like to finish with you coming up with one key action for the next week. So this is a small goal. We're not trying to push you to do ridiculous achievements in a week, but looking at that 12 monthly goal, and ideally those of you that are setting monthly, quarterly goals, what are the what, what is the one action you're going to take in the next week that's going to edge you closer to that 12 monthly goal? Remember to keep it smart and remember to consider your purpose and your vision when you're setting it. And don't worry too much right now about starting small. At this stage, it's all about taking the action and building the momentum and it'd be great to hear from some of you as the next week progresses before our next session and see how, how you're actually getting on with that because by just breaking it down and taking that one action you can then visualize the next step which will hopefully motivate you to keep going and while a lot of emphasis today has been on doing something sometimes not doing something or actually breaking a bad habit is just as important so perhaps your goal might be something that you're going to begin to stop um, but yeah, I think I think really that's pretty much it from me today for our first session. And I think uh, hopefully that has helped everyone listening in some way. And I believe we're going to open the floor for a few questions to finish off, Greg. Yeah, thanks, Joe. It's uh, really really insightful. Um, yeah, a few few questions have come in as we've been talking. Um, so one of them started with thanking you for the session, but just wanted a little bit more clarity in terms of what uh, the difference between vision and goals are, if you could try and help them with that yeah so i think i think vision is your vision is a goal to an extent but the way it differs from the goals i was talking about towards the end of the session is to me a vision is really big and bold and longer term it's often a bit more vague so a vision may not be completely smart because you just it's sort of like the direction point you want to get to the way i look at the vision is it's like an ultimate goal and your goals themselves are sort of mini steps to help you reach it so the vision is a bit more big, bold, widespread, perhaps a little bit more vague than a defined, a, a truly well-defined goal. But I think the vision is your sort of your ultimate where you want to get the business to. You're, you're basically your ideal world. And the goals help shape the pathways to get there, being really specific action steps that you can take to get yourself towards that vision. Um, hopefully that helps. Yeah, thank you. Um... So just sort of, I guess, following on from that, uh, there was a question around what ways can I successfully articulate my why to clients and customers? Any any sort of top tips? Yeah, I think I think this is a really good question. And, and, and I think to me, it starts with telling your story. You know, a lot of the time your why comes from your deep rooted story. A lot of the time when I speak with business owners, especially those that have a really passionate and distinct why, it comes from a personal story where it, it, it really strongly resonates and relates to them. And many of you will have, if all of you will have an element of the backstory, and a lot of you will have a really strong backstory that has led you to create the business that you're in at the moment. And 
that's the fuel for your why. And if you just tell your story, people will generally enjoy listening to your listening to it because it's personal, and that straight away will make it more relatable. Um, so it's a really good way of sort of enticing customers, team members, everyone else to be on your level and understand you and understand your purpose. So I think that's telling your story and, and drilling back to your past experiences and the reasons why you got into doing what you're doing is a really good way to do that. Great, thanks Joe. Uh, another one that's come in is, have you got any advice on where to start in writing down the vision? Uh, this person finds it tough to actually simplify their vision and goals. So any top, top tips in terms of where to start? So with, with that, I, I would I would go back to the I would go back to that sentence that we looked at earlier, and I, I would I would try your best to have a little look at, at completing that sentence. Do it to the best of your ability, and, and feel free to send it send it across afterwards, and we can discuss. Because I think if we get an idea of where you're sort of at with it, we may be able to help you make that a little bit more succinct. But I'd have a little look at that uh, at that question where you're basically saying, at my company, our vision is for a world where because that will bring your why and your purpose into it as well. So I think if you have a go at completing that sentence to start off with, but ultimately it comes with what it is that you want long term. If you if you had, if you were sitting there now and you could picture that ideal world, what would it look like from for your business and from your business through your business's lens? Um, and I think that's the, that's the way to start personally. I think that would be the best way to start. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you if you if you're willing to send send what you where you're at and what you've got through across, we'll, we'll more than happily have a little look at it with you. Great. Uh, sorry, there's a couple more if, if we've got time. So, um, so one of them, I guess, is is following on in terms of set, setting that uh, vision and goal. But is it beneficial to set a highly optimistic vision, even though it will be hard to achieve in the long term? Okay. Um, again, I think that's a good question, but. To me, it's why the why is so important because it, it really it's really important to dream big. And I think you should promote setting an optimistic vision because it gives you that sort of that stretch and it gives you that push and it helps you develop outside your comfort zone. But you have to ask yourself, is that really what I want or does it just sound good? Because a lot of people, when you initially ask them and you say dream big, be big, they'll, they'll say something really, really massive. But then you you say to them, okay, so what does that actually mean to you? Why is that helpful for you? Why does that why does that resonate with you? Why do you want that? And it's sort of like, well, do you know what? It just sounded good. I was I was getting a bit excited when you start saying dream big. It's, it's, and then you and then you follow on. You say, okay, so that's good. I want you to be excited. I want you to be dreaming big. I want you to be in that mind frame. But let's make it more specific to you because the reality is, I mean, if you want to be the biggest tech company in the world, that sounds amazing. But do, do you really what why you know and i think that's the thing you have to critique your own thoughts in that respect and ask why why do you want what why does that why is that important so that that's what i'd say to that one that's great thanks joe and there's just sort of one other uh that throughout the session you were sort of talking about accountability so uh what would you say the benefits are of using a coach to make yourself accountable is that something you you recommend well, I, I, de I definitely do. And I think that the, the reason that I recommend it is that a coach can see things through an unemotional lens. And I found, I found that really powerful with myself. And I, I, and I think everyone should use a coach to an extent. And the reason is that they can see things that you perhaps can't because naturally, as a business owner, you are going to be emotionally attached to your business. You care about it. You're passionate about it. It's your baby. A coach can come in and to an extent weave through the emotion and just put simple things down to say look for a minute forget the emotion and if you want to make your business a success and achieve these goals this is what you're going to need to do but you have to be open-minded to be pushed because naturally a coach will push you it will they will encourage you to take that brave step outside your comfort zone and put yourself into a position where you haven't been before but that's a fundamental of success and i just think that that is one element of it. And then the accountability, knowing that you have to go back to your coach, you have to report to your coach, the coach will be tracking how you're getting on. It adds pressure, but it adds pressure in a nice way because it keeps you focused. And like we were saying before, having that clarity and having that accountability kind of forces you to make a stand and say, look, I'm not going to allow my time to be taken up by doing this. I've got a responsibility to my coach and to myself to make my business the best it can be. Me deciding to deal with this task it's going to slow me down on that mission. So they're the, they're the reasons to me why I think having a coach is so important. 
Brilliant. So um, thanks for answering all those questions. We're going to leave those questions for now. Um, we, we'll be able to, we've got some slides later in terms of any other questions we didn't get to. Um, so just to sort of uh, wrap up then really. So I've just got a quick poll um, that I want to share on the screen, which is, uh, would you like to find out any more information about the Interactive Accelerator program? Uh, it's quite simply yes or no. If you uh, answer yes, obviously we'll put your uh, your details in front of Joe and Joe will reach out to you to, to sort of talk, tell you a little bit more about the program. Um, and then um, I've got one more poll and then we'll, we're nearly finished. I'm just going to leave that poll a few more seconds. Okay, I'm going to close that poll. Uh, and then the other poll is just to really a way of reminding people that this is the first of a seven part series. So have you signed up uh, for the rest of the business support webinars? Uh, if you haven't, then there will be a link that we will send to you after this webinar to encourage you to sign up to the next six sessions as well, just to sort of continue your journey. Okay, there's quite a few of you who said yes, uh, and some of you have put no, but you're going to, which is great to see. Uh, so hopefully see you on the, the next webinars that we're running. And just to remind you of the dates, so on your screen, you can see we've got sales and marketing on the 28th, uh, which is the next one. So make sure you sign up to that one. And then we've got mindset, cash flow, systems and processes, profitability and team and culture as well. So I will send you the link afterwards, but please do sign up to these free sessions. Uh, then just a brief reminder, we've got some other webinars upcoming as well. So employing people, 10 things you need to get right, uh, some more HR related ones in terms of how to deal with bullying and harassment, uh, and then a webinar about returning to work after lockdown as well. I think everyone's starting to get ready for that. Uh, and then a few um, other ones about how serious allegations can be handled safely, what are protected or without prejudice conversations, and remote working, how can you manage performance? Uh, those of you who have been on our webinars before, we know we do other training courses. The, the list of those are on the screen, um, but we will send you a link to those afterwards as well. Uh, and those of you who are new to uh, our webinar programme, if you wish to sign up to our newsletter, then you'll be the first to hear about not just our news, but our invites to upcoming events as well. As I mentioned, if you do have any further questions, if you want to send them to inquiries at hrsolutions-uk.com, and then we'll get those to Joe, who will respond to you directly. After the webinar, there'll be a, a follow-up email as well, which will also ask for your feedback so that we can look to improve and any other topics that you'd like to hear us talk about as well. That just leaves me to say thank you to Joe uh, for his insightful session uh, on vision and goals and uh, look forward to the next sessions. So thank you, everybody. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Greg.